Gigabyte's X299 motherboard lineup features a range of options with support for Intel's Core X series CPUs. Boards like the Aorus X299 Gaming 7 are packed with useful features and support Optane memory, Thunderbolt 3, and USB 3.1 Gen 2. Click the link in the description for more information. Excellent! Arctic Panther, part two. All right, uh, basically here's where we are, where we left off last time. And first off, I have to mention my back plates for my graphics cards. I got a ton of feedback on that. A ton of people said they really liked the idea of going with it, which, which I was kind of stoked on too. But I also had feedback from several people, including an emergency message from Steve from Gamers Nexus, uh, some messages that he was relaying from people who were getting in touch with him to try to get in touch with me, that um, this is not the best idea if I can't do all the proper um, uh, mounting points with the screws for the blocks underneath, and that this will uh, end up leading to potentially overheating VRMs in particular because there's not enough pressure going on there. So with all that considered, very soon I'm going to be switching over to these EK backplates, uh, so I'll get started on that. But beyond that, the next steps for today. Uh, down here we have some examples of hardware I'm going to be installing. Starting off with fittings, these are the EK HDC fittings, 16 millimeter as far as the uh, PETG outer diameter that they work with. G1 quarter, of course, just like pretty much all the major fittings you use on the market. And those are gonna be everywhere that I need fittings on the build, such as the inlet and outlets of my monoblock right here. Now the inlet has to be right here, the center, because the inlet has to be uh, pushing the, the fluid directly down over the CPU, because that's where the CPU is. Everything else is cooling like the VRMs up here and that kind of thing. And this is going to be the outlet. That means I can't quite do the same layout or configuration that I had with the original AP build. Uh, so that's gotten me thinking about how to do things a little bit differently. The other things that I wanted to do differently this time was make sure that I had a built-in uh, inlet as well as a drain port. So to add those, I'm going to use these, uh, the EKAF Philport G1 quarter black. And these are basically uh, two-piece things. I actually had to pry this one off with some pliers because it was on there pretty thick. But Basically, you make a hole in the case, pop that through it, and then secure it from the other side with this ring that goes around the outside, and then you have a built-in port that you can use to easily fill or drain. I'll be pairing that up with the uh, ball valve the guy right here, and that's basically just a ball valve. Uh, you can let it flow or turn it off, and that will allow me to turn the fill ports on or off. Now, for the drain, I think the best port part is going to be, uh, and I'm sorry if you can't see it very well, but right here at the bottom, it's a solid piece of the case that I can drill through. It doesn't conflict with that. It doesn't conflict with the uh, dust filter underneath, and it's clear underneath there as well. So I'll be making a hole right there to put that onto, and won't that be fun? And from there, I'll either use just a fitting to go on there and then tubing off of that, or I might potentially uh, just do this, this guy right on there. I might do that on the side over there. We'll see. Another thing I've discovered just as I've been looking at stuff is I wanna put a, an exhaust fan here at the back. I wasn't able to do that with the original version because there wasn't enough clearance for the outlets here that I need to put something on for the uh, tubing and the flow, fluid to go through that radiator um, and it would conflict with the 120 millimeter fan here. I tried a few things with like putting adapters directly on the outlet ports and stuff and even potentially shifting the fan down as low as possible because you can fit it below where the actual mounting points are but even with that it wasn't enough so what I actually did was the top radiator right now I have shifted over so basically the two mounting points like here at the middle that each uh, center one has, instead of being there and there, I shifted them over here. So it's missing several screw holes down at the further end and uh, at this end. So I will have to screw through there, but um, fortunately that fits in there and there's clearance for everything. There's also space at the back through the top right here where I can add a fill port. And so that's where I'm also going to be doing a little bit more case modding. So what I need to do in the near future, other than swapping out those back plates, is get this guy here set up so I can kind of get a gauge on where my pump reservoir and everything is gonna be. So this is the bracket that's gonna go on the radiator. Also, I have decided not to go with the slim radiator. Uh, I want as much cooling performance as possible, so I'm not gonna use the slim edition. I'm gonna use the original uh, performance edition, 240 rad for the front that I had with the original build. So that's going to go in the front there with this bracket on it and that bracket's going to hold the pump like so. See? That's how it's going to work.
So I think I figured out how I want the loop to go. Um, you guys might have noticed I got this assembly with the 240 millimeter front radiator. Uh, it's, it's just kind of hanging in there right now. I did mount it from the other side, but uh, it's got the bracket on the bottom uh, with the DDC pump, and then I put the taller reservoir on it um, with the special head with the multiple outputs as well as outputs at the back. So because the reservoir is kind of tall, it would conflict with the inlet out outlet of the radi radiator up here. I have some double 45 degree angle joints that I put on either one of those just so they can get around that. And there's, there's enough clearance. It gets by there and it's not actually touching. Um, so these are dual rotary fittings, so it means that they have a decent amount of play in them, uh, which will be helpful as that'll be probably some of the tighter bends I need to do to get that worked out. So starting from uh, where the pump pushes water out right here, I think I'm going to go up and then into this front 240 millimeter radiator. Uh, out the other side of that, and then I actually have this little thing that I put together. Um, this is actually, this is just a bracket like you'd use to actually hold up uh, a reservoir like that one, but I instead I've used it to attach this Primo Chill flow indicator. So um, I think I'm going to pop that on the side, uh, like like so, or thereabouts, and it's, I can move that up or down if I need to, uh, because I want to use a flow indicator. But it's actually also in a good spot because I'm going to need to come out of this front radiator. I'm going to go over and then into the top of this, and then out the side, and into the CPU, or into the monoblock for the CPU right there. Out of the monoblock, and then up into the top 360 rad, out of the top 360 rad, and down over to my GPU configuration right here as an inlet. I'm going to put these both in parallel so the outlet will be down here. That will come down uh, like hereabouts and go into this little T-splitter. So this is actually a three-way T-splitter. It's got uh, two, two on the sides and then also goes out the bottom. So the bottom will come down. I'll need to use some, uh, some in-betweens here, some male male adapters. Um, but then got my shutoff right there, drain port down at the bottom. And then this uh, would go just straight back into the, uh, the pump right here, but um, I'd actually have to cross over because the inlet's over here. So I'm probably actually going to go back here and then into the pump inlet that's on the back. And then for my fill, uh, I'm just going to use one of the parts from the cap here. It's got inlets on the back of the cap, and then that's just going to go up to my fill port, which I'm going to put right up there. So we have a plan, and now I have work to do.
So yesterday actually went really well uh, just because I was able to, to kind of buckle down and put my head down and get a bunch of work done. Uh, so I was very satisfied with, with the work I got done during the day. However, looking at it this morning, I realized like it kind of looks, as far as the system, exactly the same as it did when I started yesterday morning. But that is not to say that I didn't get a lot done. A lot of it had to do with planning. So um, figuring it out, figuring out exactly how the loop was going to go, uh, where the, the, you know, from point A to point B to point C and all that, uh, what direction it was going to flow in, that was all really important. And figuring out exactly where, all, where the radiators were going to be, how many fans I was going to be able to fit in there, um, shifting some stuff around, and then of course, very importantly, the uh, fill port at the top and the drain port at the bottom, and some extra little case mods just to make sure I could mount the radiators properly and everything. So. So all that took some time, but turned out really well, especially the fill in the drain ports. I'm really, really happy with that. Now my attention has turned back to the power supply, which you guys might have seen in the first video. I did a little bit of uh, modification on it, just uh, sanding the side of it and painting it all black just to kind of black it out and make it look a little bit cleaner. It didn't turn out exactly how I wanted, and uh, I need some better sandpaper. I need some really fine grit sandpaper so I can sand that down a little bit better and get rid of some of the streaks that are on there. I have some really nice... Uh, etching primer paints that was recommended by Bill Owen. It's made for like automotive work and stuff. So I know that'll do a good job covering it up. Uh, I just need to make a quick run to the, the store to get some, some better sandpaper. Also, I've realized that um, whereas the original Arctic Panther had the right uh, 24 pin and four eight pin connectors that I had sleeved for the power cables coming from the power supply for the video cards and the motherboard, the supplemental CPU power is only a eight pin on the original. Uh, on the X99 version, and now I need 8 plus 4. So I'm going to need to figure out how to get an extra 4 pin supplemental CPU uh, power cable, uh, which shouldn't be too tough, but hopefully I won't have to mod things up too much. Anyway, I'm going to get over to the store. I think I'm going to start off with the 320 and hit it with the 600. I'm using a, a zoom groom to. Yeah. Alright guys, here it is. I am going to do a once over of the system in its current state because I think I've gotten to the point where I, I, this video is getting too long, there's too much going on, and I've discovered other things that still need to be done, so it's a good time to probably cut it off. Now the good news is, all of the elements of the water cooling loop are pretty much installed where I, where I want them to be, and I've even gone ahead and at least for the sake of not lying to you guys in the last video, done my first bit of tubing installation. Although I think I'm going to swap it out because it it's a little too long and I might have scuffed it while I was installing it. But that said, uh, the loop, as I already mentioned, starts from the pump down there, goes up through that first tube that's already put in into this radiator. It's going to come out the back of that radiator and it's going to do a little, little several turns over there to go on the top of this uh, Primo Chill flow indicator, which is going to be holding on to the uh, vertical reservoir right there. Out of the Primo Chill Flow Indicator, into the mono block, out of the mono block, into the top 360 red, out of the top 360 red, into the two GPUs in parallel, and then out of that into this little assembly, which I kind of put together last night. I popped a 90 degree angle on the uh, on the top of that, and I think it actually makes it line up a little bit better with this guy, and uh, just looks a little bit cleaner like that. So. That will come out of there and go into here, drains at the bottom, and then uh, out of here and into the back of the pump. So I gotta work that out too. So several bends that will be a little bit challenging, but overall nothing too terrible. Oh, and then of course uh, the drain, or I'm sorry, the fill port on the top up there is going to go into the top of the reservoir. So, so that's planned out. Uh, I was able to fit all seven fans in, so three on the top, got my exhaust in the back, uh, got the two intakes that are there in the front and so that's cool uh, also probably going to do one in the bottom still as well although i got to figure out where exactly i can fit that where it will be the most functional and, and that kind of thing i could go without that too but i'm a little worried that i'd have too much negative pressure 
So that's all well and good, but you're probably noticing that the main piece that's missing right now is my power supply, and that is presenting a few more just last minute challenges for me. Now you probably saw me do a bit of repainting on it, which turned out uh, okay, I think. I, I, I'm just gonna go with it as is. There's still a little bit of texture there as far as where I sanded it, but it's doing okay. But I am in need of an additional four pin supplemental CPU power connector. So I had salvaged or basically stolen this a CPU uh, lead from an EVGA sleeved power supply cable kit, which I figured, well, it's sleeved enough. It'll, it'll, it's not going to be very visible, so it'll be okay. I was going to rewire that, and I'd have to probably pop the cap off here and swap one of those on and whatever. But then I realized, oh yeah, I have all this stuff in my garage because I save things, including the Fractal uh, Newton 1000 watt modular cable kit. Super easy to open. But then I went in here and I was like, oh good. There's an EPS 12 volt uh, supplemental CPU power connector. And yeah, it's got it's got eight pin plugs on both sides. So actually the white plug will probably be fine with the power supply. This plug will not fit onto the motherboard because it's a four pin and there's uh, capacitors on either side. So that uh, I would need to pop this off either, either way. So, so I got to figure that out. I might actually sleeve one of these or sleeve this one. It's, it's still up in the air, but I've also figured that um, the cable from the pump comes back here, which actually goes off into two. One for PWM control, plugs into the motherboard, and one for power directly to the power supply. And that's all yellow and, and blue and green, and, and there's no way to hide it right there. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need to pull that off, sleeve it too. So combine that cabling stuff that I need to work out the details for with the fact that I still have all the tubing installation and tube bending to do, and I think we're in for a part three for the Arctic Panther videos. I kind of decided when I embarked on this project that I was just going to put about a day to a day and a half of work into each video, kind of cut it off where I'm at, and then give you guys a video for it. So hope you're bearing with me through the multi-part stuff, and I'm trying to do at least one of these a week until it's done. Thank you guys so much for watching though. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this one and uh, part three coming hopefully very, very soon. If you guys have any feedback, comments, questions, whatever, leave them in the comments section down below and I'll try to take a look at those and give you guys some responses too. And we'll see you guys in the next video.